meat and other live uh, imported goods and also the containers have also been tested positive. So today we have to prevent and control pandemic not only among the people but also among the objects. And we should also carry out the response mechanism. Recently, the Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism of the State Council has published relevant guidelines and also the preventive measures for the disinfection of the coaching related food and also the protection measures for the people working in the coaching related areas. So the topic of today's press conference would be uh, the introduction of the measures to safeguard coaching food and to guarantee the food safety in autumn and winter. We have invited Mr. Bi Kexin from the General Administration of Customs and Mr. Chen Xu from China State Administration for Market Regulation and Madden Lining from National Center for Food Safety and Risk as well as Chief Epidemiologist Mr. Wu Zunyou from CDC and Chief Expert Zhang Liubo from CDC of China. And all these experts and representatives today will talk about the measures guaranteeing the safety of the food in the coaching and also during the autumn and winter season. And after their after this introduction, we let the floor open to receive your questions. Thank you. I'm from People's Daily. Recently, in multiple places, we have discovered the external packages of the coaching related foods tested positive. What is the reason behind that? I'd like to give the floor to Madam Leaning. Thank you for your question. Recently, in many places, for the imported coaching food, especially with their external package, we have uh, discovered the nuclear acid test, the positive result. Because many foreign countries, they are in the situation of a surge of cases. So for the imported foods, especially in the coaching, from those countries may have the possibility to carry the virus. And more importantly, the virus could survive even better in the cold temperature environment. So that's why the coaching imports of the food could be a higher possible carrier of the virus. Recently, according to the deployment of the work of the Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism of the State Council, we have intensified the samples taken and also the random checks from the coaching imports. And that explains also the rising ratios of the testing positive of those coaching foods. And the rising numbers also showcase that we have taken stronger measures. And once there's a problem discovered, we will immediately take the measures so as to lower the risk of further transmission of the virus among the people. And currently, the ratio of the positive results is relatively low. Journalist from the first row on the left side, please. Thank you. With the Beijing news. In many cities, there have been sporadic cases. Localities have made very prompt responses. But I have this question that in such a season, what should be the measures to be adopted to reduce or even avoid the resurgence of uh, cluster cases for the general public? Are there any tips? I'd like to ask Chief Epidemiologist Mr. Wu Zuiyou from CDC to take the question. Thank you for your question. As uh, the global pandemic poses new threats and pressure, 
it is just a natural to see sporadic cases in the domestic landscape. It is not likely to have uh, the zero case, but we can adopt an array of measures to minimize the likelihood of cluster cases. We can adopt the following measures. First, we must implement, refine the prevention control measures on an ongoing basis. Second, we should improve surveillance efforts and make strenuous efforts to ensure that once infection is found, once a case is found, we can immediately spot the case and make response. Third, once we have identified the sporadic cases, we must organize efforts to control its further on transmission. Besides, uh, so we can identify the highly risky or vulnerable groups with the application of vaccines. All these measures can help to reduce the likelihood of uh, cluster cases. And for the general public, as always, we emphasize the message of uh, ongoing efforts, including reducing social gatherings, wearing masks, good hand hygiene, and keeping good social distance. In particular, in winter times, many rooms are confined and not well ventilated, and we take more public transportation vehicles. We take the lifts in these semi-confined and not well ventilated places, we recommend the use of masks so as to reduce the likelihood of transmission and infection. Thank you. Next question, please. Journalist from the second row on the right side, please. With CCTV, we've noticed that on 22nd, NHC held a teleconference emphasizing the prevention and control um, prior to the Spring Festival. My question for the experts are uh, your judgment on the winter pandemic situation. Will there be more clustered or sporadic cases if we say we want to improve the prevention control measures? How? What are the areas that we should focus on? The general public is very much concerned whether we will adopt strict measures as when the outbreak occurred in the first place. Uh, Mr. Wu Zhenyou is taking the question. Thank you for your question. Yes, indeed, there's a question in the limelight. In the autumn and winter season global pandemic, it's seeing new spikes, in particular in November. The daily cases might be even above 600,000. Recently in Shanghai, Anhui, Tianjin, Neymang, and multiple provinces and cities, sporadic cases have been reported. It was like that the coronavirus is coming back and knocking on our door. Moving into winter, the global pandemic is even more serious. The world is faced with another grim exam. So is China. Luckily, in the past 11 year, uh, months, we've uh, summarized uh, a set of effective measures so that we can figure out the pandemic and control the pandemic within the smallest possible range as quickly as possible. As the world pandemic is getting very serious in such an uh, environment, everybody should uh, be aware of the reality. And we also need to have a reasonable expectation. If you expect China does not have the pandemic anymore, it is not realistic. If there are sporadic cases, I think it is only normal in the long 
process of、uh, preventing and controlling the pandemic, we have experienced、uh, this over the past 11 months, and we've got、uh, success, especially during national holiday. There are、uh, large scale of、uh, mobility of a population, but there hasn't been the rebounding now for the cases. In the next stage, we will have the Chinese New Year. It is、uh, possible for us to see more cases. However, if there is、uh, no People in the population who are infected by the disease, I don't think there will be a large scale of outbreak. So, based on our experience over the past 11 months, we have the confidence to prevent the rebounding of the pandemic, and we can prevent the various serious situation like the beginning of 2020. To do that, of course, we need to adopt scientific preventive measures. To summarize,、uh, scientific prevention and control, precision measures, and highlighting the priorities so that our measures can be very targeted and very accurate, so that we are able to figure out the cases immediately after they break out and minimize the area of infection. Thank you. And the journalist. Over there. Thank you, Monitor. I'm from、uh, Oriental TV. We've noticed that、uh, recently the Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism has launched the guidelines on the disinfection techniques to prevent and control coronavirus in the production process of cooking food. So, if we follow these guidelines strictly, does it mean we can take those cooking food very、um, safely? Thank you. Zhang Liubo would Zhang Liubo would like to answer this question. Thank you very much for your question as to the disinfection of a cold chain product. Based on our practices over the past few months, we've realized that there is a strong connection of coronavirus outer package and the infection. So as a result, the Joint Prevention and Control Mechanism launched the guideline just now you mentioned. This is a technical document. This document,、uh, in my opinion, in the room temperature circumstances for the outer package of、um, low temperature food disinfection, it is totally、um, no problem. However, if it is a low temperature, the freezing warehouse for food there to disinfect the food there, the technical methods are still being studied. We hope that we can come up with results、uh, in a short run as soon as possible. As to Whether food can be eaten directly after the food is disinfected, I would like to make three points. Firstly, the disinfection is for the surface of the outer package of the food. So the major purpose is、uh, to prevent. The possible、uh, infection in the process of circulation. So that is one point. Secondly, our disinfection at present has not revealed that because you just eat directly the cold chain food, you. Are infected、uh, directly? We haven't、uh, found、uh, such cases yet. So, just now, Director Wu has already made this point. Thirdly, after disinfection, disinfection. Can inactivate the virus. However, after inactivation, nucleic acid still exists. Therefore, when we conduct the testing, it's still possible to have a positive testing result. So, after disinfection, if、uh, the positive、um, is still there, don't be worried because the inactivate、um, virus is there, but the nuclear acid nucleic acid won't be destroyed. Thank you. The journalist over there. Thank you. Oriental TV.、Um, we are、um, having the question with a German focus, with a European focus. The pandemic remains globally severe. China seems to have the pandemic under control. Could you please summarize what are your measures? What is the Chinese recipe? 好，请把问题翻译一下。
，来自于德国电视一台的记者。因为是德国电视一台的记者，所以我的提问是带着一定的欧洲德国视角的。现在全球疫情形势依然非常严峻，而疫情在中国已经得到了控制。请问总结起来看，中国成功的秘诀是什么？谢谢。Okay, Wu Zhenyou, please. Thank you. I'd like to thank our foreign friend for asking this very good question. Actually, in the international community, this question has always been de discussed. Why the global pandemic is getting very serious? However, the situation here in China is pretty good. So, actually, to summarize, uh, China has taken the following major measures to fight against the pandemic. It's just like a fight a war. It's very critical to take quick actions. So, firstly, we figure we discover the pandemic, the cases as quickly as possible. That is the first step. And after that, we will take a number of measures. For example, we just test all of those possible cases, and also we isolate all of those possible. Infected patients, and also at the same time, we also take measures to treat all of those uh, cases which are qualified to take treatment. We will give them treatment for free. Meanwhile, the related information will be disclosed to the society in a timely manner so that more response measures can be taken. However, it seems that those measures are the same here in China and in foreign countries. Why China makes a difference? I think the very critical thing is that here we really unify together as a whole nation. We take actions all together so that we can achieve our success. So from this perspective, technicalities are very important. Strong leaders Leadership and unified actions are equally important. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm uh, from Cover News. Uh, my question is uh, to the General Administration of Customs. We know that not long ago, um, the Joint Mechanism has made a comprehensive uh, deployment for the disinfection of cold chain imported food. So what is the action taken by General Administration of Customs? Because in please, thank you for your attention to our work. In order to make sure we are able to take long-term prevention measures to control the pandemic, according to the mechanism, on October 18th, we have adopted a work plan to comprehensively disinfect the imported cold chain product. And then we also adopted the implementation rules to disinfect the food at ports. According to the joint mechanisms requirement for the cold chain product, we have made a comprehensive deployment. For example, we have made it very clear what are our requirements for our uh, processes as well as uh, the supporting measures. According to the plan of the joint mechanism, the customs is responsible for conducting cold chain food, coronavirus monitoring and the testing. We will also organize and guide the importers and the operators to cooperate with us to organize preventive disinfection in the containers. After we have uh, taken those uh, measures uh, yesterday at the ports, the order package uh, around 160,000, around 30,000 tons have been disinfected. For example, uh, the outer packages, the containers, as well as the trellis, the, tra the trails and uh, the of the air transportation, as well as the fisher boats and uh, the container um, transportation trucks. Uh, we have conducted the disinfection measures. In the future, we will continue to fulfill our responsibility and uh, coordinate with local governments to carry out follow-up disinfection actions to make sure the coaching food imported is safe. Thank you. Journalist from the third row on the left side, please. Thank you. With Hong Kong Economic Herald News. Recently, 
If you look at the cases in Dalian, Qingdao, Tianjin, many of uh, the infected are the cold chain products handlers. What is the expert's opinion on their protection? I'd like to ask Madam Li Ning to take the question. Thank you for your question. In Dalian, Qingdao, Tianjin, and multiple places, we found cases of uh, food handlers along the cold chain products. It shows that people in certain industries without proper protection may be infected with the coronavirus because of frequent touching of the cold chain contaminated products to prevent the further occurrence. The State Council Interagency Task Force has issued technical guidelines on the coronavirus prevention and control in the cold chain food industry. This guideline provides specific prevention and control and protection in all the steps and links along the cold chain, including production, uploading, discharging, transportation, storage, sales, and catering. It is requested that uh, all these steps must be paid attention to. NAT tests must be improved as well, especially for the hand handlers who frequently is exposed to cold chain products must uh, wear the protective gowns when use only surgical masks when it is necessary they are recommended and requested to wear the goggles and shields avoid the direct uh, skin contacts with uh, the surface of the cold chain products after their work they must uh, uh, regard, have a good hand hygiene and disinfection, avoid touching their eyes, nose, and mouth. I believe with uh, the proper implementation of uh, these requests, the cold chain food handlers are well protected. The likelihood of transmission and infection among these people can also be reduced by big margin. Thank you. Next question, please. Journalist from the third row on the right side, please. Thank you with Phoenix TV. I have a question for Mr. Wu Zhuanyou from CDC. If you look at uh, the recent cases, it seems that uh, once we see the occurrence of a case, we immediately kick off a large scale testing. Is it necessary? Is it science based? Is it cost effective? I'd like to ask Mr. Wu Zhuanyou to take the question. Thank you for your question. Um, the NAT tests. NAT tests is a fully fledged technology and an essential component of our response to the pandemic. It is highly necessary to adopt NAT test, which is highly sensitive, effective, and very quickly it can help us to define the scope of uh, the occurrence so that the local people and the local government can be feel assured. Therefore, it is necessary to have the large-scale NAT test once we see any cluster cases. Second, it is science-based. Once there is a virus in the sample with the amplification, it can be easily tested. It is a one to five mixture of samples. If it is negative, then we don't have to take care of it anymore. If it is positive, we have to continue the exploration. The one to five mixture and the blending of samples can help us to timely and effectively identify the infected. It is also cost effective for large scale NAT testing. Third, it is also beneficial on an individual base. NET test continues to be the most effective way to identify early cases. The infected person can benefit from knowing the result in the earliest time possible. 
because the treatment can help him or her to stay in the mild case category without transmitting quickly to the severe or critical cases. And also, we know that coronavirus transmits to those that are closest to us, and the elderly uh, the vulnerable. Therefore, early identification is very important. Days before, I have been working in Kashgar in Xinjiang for four weeks. There has been very frequent NAT tests. And for me personally, because I was working there, I have taken six NAT tests within four weeks. It is a cost-effective, science-based, and effective way. Thank you. Next question, please. Journalist from the fourth row on the right side, please. The journalist in black. Thank you. China economic news. My question is that once the consumer comes into contact with cold chain products, are there any health tips for the consumers to have um, this infection? I'd like to ask Mr. Zhang Liubo to take the question. After a consumer is exposed to cold chain products, we can have uh, some disinfection methods to prevent against possible transmission or infection. First, uh, good hand hygiene is highly recommended. After we touch any cold chain products, we must uh, wash hands. There are some health tips for the six-step hand washing or seven-step hand washing. Generally, for ordinary consumers, six-step hand washing is uh, good enough. If you still feel a little bit worried, you can use a hand sanitizer or disinfectant. Besides, for the frozen or refrigerated uh, products, the cutlery, the cutting boards, the utensils may also come into contact with uh, the cold chain products. We need to wash them properly, prevent uh, the splash and the sputtering. For the cutlery and uh, the cutting boards, we can boil them in hot water or put them in the water 60 degrees and above. We can also spray alcohol onto these uh, surfaces, and we can also use uh, the coloring contained disinfectant to spray the surfaces of uh, those utensils. For the uh, cutting boards, we can also use uh, the disinfectant, including the alcohol and the chlorine contained disinfectant, to clean the boards, the cutting boards, and also the cooking boards. We should also consider the food residues. From the cold chain products, we must uh, collect them timely and uh, send them to the garbage stations for further treatment. If we can put them in an independent package, that is the most ideal. Thank you. Next question, please. Journalist from the first row on the right side, please. Thank you. Um, Economic Daily. Many consumers are very much concerned about the safety of imported cold chain products. Can they still consume them? How can they prevent against infection? Again, I'd like to ask Mr. Zhang Liubo to take the question. Madam Li Ni from the China Food Safety Assessment Center have already introduced her opinions. And uh, on top of that, I like to say that we see the greatest risk come from the distribution circulation, the discharging, uploading, the most frequent food handlers. We have never seen any case of infection because of consumption. In this context, I don't think we should give up eating only because of the fear of choking. 
So from this perspective, the risk is uh, relatively low. That is uh, one point. Uh, secondly, nowadays for the frozen food, the outer package will be disinfected. After disinfection, once we touch the surface, it would be safe. So in such circumstances, in general, we shall not be too nervous, of course. There are still several things we need to pay attention to. Firstly, if you buy food not from normal circulation channels, but buy directly from online, for example, for such food package, you must disinfect the package. You must be careful to protect yourself. Secondly, after you touch such food, you must clean wash your hands. Thirdly, during the pandemic, we must be careful that we'd better to eat cooked food. Fourthly, when we process such food, we must uh, prevent the spray of or the droplet in order to prevent the contamination of the surrounding environment. Uh, next, after all of those disposal measures for the environment and for the surface, we should have necessary disinfection measures as well. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. Heilong Jiang just had uh, the toxic incident of uh, Suantang's noodle, and it has led to nine people died. And recently, there were also some cases of uh, being poisoned by wild mushrooms. So in winter, what kind of food is easy for people to get intoxicated? And for what food we should pay special attention? How can we prevent I'm from a China food safety? Newspaper. Thank you. Uh, Li Ning would like to answer this question. Heilong Jiang's incident has led to nine people died. We felt very sorry about this. And during this incident, because uh, people took the Suantang's noodle they made by themselves at home. And actually, in addition to Suantang's noodle, there were also some other special local food, which are also easy to be contaminated in the process of being produced. Therefore, in the process of producing those food, we must be very careful. Uh, firstly, the material you use must be very fresh. And also in the process of producing those food, you need to change water frequently and stir them frequently, in particular in schools and uh, in the dining halls of um, the organizations to be safe. You'd better to do not produce this kind of food. Wild mushroom uh, is also a type of a product. A lot of people easy to take them and get poisoned. And especially when people don't understand those mushroom is uh, poisonous, they might die from it. In 2019, up to now, uh, so far around uh, 8,000 people have already been poisoned by such wild mushrooms. And uh, I must remind consumers that please do not pick up those wild mushrooms. You don't know about them. And in winter, Northern virus has become very common in many places, for example, in schools, kindergartens, and in scenic spots. In a recent period, a uh, number of Northern virus infection cases have been reported in schools. Northern virus is mainly spread through food, water, objects, and droplets. So here I would like to emphasize the following points to prevent the contamination. Firstly, you need to wash your hands frequently, especially before you eat and after you go to the restroom. And also, it would be better to use the disinfectant when you uh, wash your hands. Meanwhile, we shall also be careful about food safety and we'll eat food 
fruits and vegetables, you need to clean them. And also, you do not eat the uh, fresh uh, shell products, uncooked shell products. In schools and in kindergartens, we should also make sure that we can monitor the health of employees and uh, students there. Once there is a case, we need to isolate them. And after the symptoms disappear, after three days, they can be allowed to go back to schools. We should also pay special attention to the disinfection of key places, for example, the restroom, the dining house, and the public places, and also for the staircases, the handles, and uh, the buttons of elevators. Those are places we need to pay special attention to disinfect them. So in winter, uh, in this special season, there are still cases of food poison. So to prevent food poison, we need to remember the five points um, pointed out by WHO. We need to keep clean, and also we need to have uh, clean, fresh water, and we need to separate the cooked and the uncooked food. And uh, once we cook them, we need to make sure they are well cooked. And also we need to have uh, regular uh, cleaning activities. If we can follow those guidances of the WHO, we will be able to try our best to make sure schools and other public places to be clean and safe. Thank you. Thank you. I'm from a CCTV. When we buy and process the imported coaching food, what should we pay special attention to? Thank you. I, uh, thank you. This question has already been answered a lot by Professor Zhang Liubo. I'd like to add some points. Coronavirus is a respiratory disease. It uh, transmits from uh, people to people, and it is uh, not that uh, highly possible to get contaminated by this disease by your digestion system. And uh, from the perspective of uh, the tracing of epidemiology, for those uh, possible uh, infected uh, people, they are the people of high risk uh, who touch the cold chain food very frequently, for example, the handlers. And in recent period of time, different places have already adopted effective measures. As a result, for the consumers, uh, when we contact the outer package of imported coaching food, it is not that possible for us to be infected by coronavirus disease. And as the previous speaker also pointed out that we haven't heard of such cases yet. However, still in the current circumstances, we shall be careful. For example, when you go shopping, you need to wear masks. Do not go to crowded places when you go shopping. And you need to buy fresh food products. And when you buy food, uh, try to avoid uh, touching your nose or your eyes and uh, your mouth with your hands. So just now I've already emphasized the five major points made by the WHO. They are very critical. We need to abide by those five major points. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, from a uh, Sassan Urban Newspaper. Market is a very important place to prevent and control the disease. Therefore, I'd like uh, to ask, in terms of the market risk of prevention, what measures have been taken in China? Chen Xu, please. Thank you for your question. SAMR deeply implements the requirements of the Central Party Committee as well as the State Council's deployment to prevent and control the virus. And if we carefully implement the requirements of the joint mechanism, we actively play our role. We also emphasize the measures of preventing the infection of objects and human. We also strengthen risk control and prevention of imported cold chain food in the Chinese market. We we also also take measures to make sure coronavirus won't be imported to China through cold chain food transportation. And we have uh, taken the following five aspects of measures. In particular, firstly, we have actively uh, taken out measures to carry out inspections in the market. 
Recently, in nine provinces and cities, including Tianjin, Shandong, there have been reports on the NAT test positive results among cold chain products. The local market supervision departments and commissions, after receiving the information, timely organized the full and comprehensive screening on these products and urged the processors and the manufacturers and operators to pull those products off shelves, seal them in dedicated zones, look into the sources, where do these products are distributed to, and their storage, their quantity, and then report timely and in accordance with the regulations to the relevant provinces. Meanwhile, in accordance with uh, the coordinated deployment by the interagency task force of the locality, market supervision and regulation department has uh, organized regular NAT tests on the food handlers and in the environment. Second, we urge the food manufacturers and operators to be the people and in entities accountable for the safety. We urge them to improve their goods screening and examination, temperature control, trace and track management, personnel management, and other areas of uh, accountability. We ask them to have dedicated uh, tracks for the importation of uh, cold chain products, and these products must be stored in dedicated zones, be sold in dedicated areas, and should not be blended with other products. When they are to purchase imported cold chain products, they must ask the exporters to issue certificates of uh, disinfection. Without NET test certificates, without disinfection certificates, the products should not be imported and should not be marketed. Third, we promoted ongoing and sustained and continuous supervision and control. We've uh, emphasized uh, the track and trace management so that we know where the products come from, where they are sold to for the imported products without uh, clearly known sources, without uh, the proper documents. We have uh, put forward rectification and punishment measures. We ask the operators to ensure all the handlers and the staff must uh, have uh, the health certificates before they come to their posts. We also improve the risk prevention and the control and ask them to do a proper job to protect the individual's safety. Fourth, we implement preventative disinfection measures. Local market supervision departments collaborate with the other departments to do a good job in the disinfection along the entire cold chain products chain, including production, processing, storage, and the distribution. In the areas where there are the interior, exterior packaging, the disinfection is also carried out, we ask the disinfection unities to take out the inf disinfection efforts and avoid secondary contamination. For the contaminated products, proper handling is needed to ensure their safety. Four, fifth, we promote the building of a track and trace platform. SAMR has organized the establishment of a track and trace platform for cold chain products. Localities track and trace system are interoperable. We very quickly identify the transportation and distribution pathways, the scope of uh, uh, application, and improve uh, the efficiency of uh, the check and the response. In Beijing, Zhejiang, Guangdong, altogether 10 provinces and cities, the track and trace platform is uh, interoperable. Eight provinces have uploaded their data covering salmon, frozen shrimps, beef, and other major products. We've collaborated with the Customs Authority to improve information sharing data compatibility to ensure the full chain track and trace.
Thank you. We have time for our last two questions. Journalist from the fourth row on the left side, please. Thank you. Thank you. With the Red Star News. Moving into winter, experts say the low temperature in winter may lead to a cold chain effect. What should be the measures adopted by the logistic companies and industry? Mr. Wu Zhuanyou will take the question. Thank you for your question. In Xinjiang, Kashgar, and in Shanghai, we found consecutive cases where there are um, like cold chain effects of uh, cluster cases like cold chain virus identified in the interior surfaces of uh, containers which led to further transmission because of the low temperature in winter in many outdoor environment it is a natural cold chain transportation effect this is also because we have been deepening our understanding of the coronavirus over time, and we have already included these findings and this new knowledge into our response measures. Some departments have asked the logistic companies and distribution companies to have the proper management in the winter time, see it as critical as the management of cold chain products. Besides, for those who are working in this uh, logistic sector, they must uh, work with uh, proper protective equipment and mirrors and safeguards. Fourth, we must uh, improve uh, the testing of the environment and the testing over those who work in the industry with uh, very frequent uh, testing. We can promptly identify any infection. We can identify the infection as early and as possible and then mm, nab it in the early stage. International logistics might be a transmission pathway of virus into China, and with these proper measures, we can probably prevent against it. Thank you. Last question goes to the journalist on the second row on the left side, please. Thank you. With China Daily, compared with uh, the disinfection in ambient environment, what should be the special requirements for disinfection in the cold chain environment, and how can we effectively disinfect the exterior package of cold chain products? I'd like to ask Mr. Zhang Liubo to take the question. Thank you. Indeed, this is a good and professional question. Frankly, this infection in the cold environment or low temperature environment might be a brand new issue for even um, this infection guy like me because in the past, this infection usually works in high temperature. It was because the coronavirus infection related to cold chain products that have triggered our attention to disinfection efficacy in a low temperature environment. People are concerned about disinfection in the low temperature environment because the low temperature itself may reduce the efficacy of uh, this infection. Sometimes it may invalidate many of the commonly seen disinfectants. In this context, we do need disinfectants and disinfection methods that can work effectively and forcefully in the low temperature environment on the surfaces of the objects. I would like to put forward two principles. First, we must use safe and effective and forceful disinfectant. When I say effective disinfectant, it must be validated. If we say it works under minus 18 degrees, minus 45 degrees, it must be a validated way 
which has been proven effective. We must have a verification and a validation and even laboratory data to show that it can kill the coronavirus in an extremely low temperature environment like minus 45 degrees. But of course, we are disinfecting food. We also need to make sure food is not secondarily polluted by disinfectant. So that is the first point, safety. Secondly, we should adopt, adopt reliable disinfection approaches. We have uh, usually physical and chemical disinfection methods. However, uh, based on the current circumstances for the low temperature frozen food, chemical disinfection should uh, be easier to be implemented. It's rather difficult to have a physical disinfection. While in case of a chemical disinfection, we use chemical disinfectants as to chemical disinfectants. As far as I'm concerned, there are about two types. One type is to use disinfectant for fumigation in a closed environment. The cold chain food is piled together, and then the disinfectant is uh, turned into a state of gas. In this way, the disinfection can be carried out. Such a way of disinfection actually is uh, rather difficult. Why? Because while you are disinfecting, the gas disinfectant shall not be allowed to convert into water. For normal disinfectant, the boiling point probably compared with uh, the disinfection temperature might be very different. The disinfectant, once it touches the cold food, it is converted back into liquid. In this case, it is not possible for us to have gas disinfection anymore. The disinfection will fail. Therefore, when we verify the fumigation, we must put the targeted object at the bottom and in the middle of the whole pile. And then when the time is up, you check whether the disinfection result is achieved or not. So in my opinion, this is a very difficult point. We must pay special attention to it. Secondly, we can also use a spray to disinfect the surface of the package of uh, frozen food. For this kind of uh, disinfection, if uh, the freezing point of the disinfectant compared with the temperature of disinfection, if it is uh, a little bit lower, and it won't become ice, and uh, then we can prove it is uh, effective, and then this approach of uh, disinfection will also be valid. In this case, we must make sure the spray disinfectant can cover every corner, every corner of the package. And we also make sure the disinfectant can touch the surface of the food for enough period of time. So it is rather difficult for us to have low temperature disinfection compared with normal temperature disinfection. Thank you. Thank you very much for all of those good points you've made. Winter is a, a season in which pandemic is more serious. Therefore, we need to take actions and we need to wear masks. We need to wash our hands regularly. We also need to reduce. We also need to make sure we can have a safe distance with each other, especially in closed environments such as elevator. We need to take special actions to make sure we ourselves are safe. With that, we conclude our press conference today. Thank you.